part, we're going to be looking at momentum right now. And I'm going to drop a couple of balls. Volleyball, tennis ball. Both bounce. Conservation momentum when they hit the ground. Ground gives them an impulse back, so they bounce back up. They don't bounce quite as high as when they're dropped because they're going to lose a little energy due to friction. Um, the thing is, what happens if I take the balls and I stack them? Is that what you expect? The little ball bounces higher. Why is that? All right, let's talk about why the balls did what they did. You got a little ball and a big ball, both dropping down, presumably both going the same speed before they hit the ground. If the acceleration due to gravity accelerates all objects equally, then they should be going the same speed when they hit the ground, although there might be a slight difference in height, but nothing noticeable. So um, given they hit the ground at the same speed, why, when the little ball is on top, does it shoot up so high in the air? Let's analyze what happens during conservation of um, momentum. All right, conservation of momentum. Momentum is given the variable P, and the formula is mass times velocity. So momentum is mass times velocity. It's given in the unit of kilogram meter per second, which is just mass times velocity. Very straightforward. Conservation momentum says the momentum you have in the beginning, the initial momentum, is equal to the momentum you have at the end of interaction, like when two things collide. So it's this fact that we're going to explore a little bit right now. Now, before the interaction, when the two balls are falling and the green ball, the tennis ball is on top of the volleyball, we have the mass of the volleyball times the velocity of the volleyball plus the mass of the tennis ball times the velocity of the tennis ball. These are the two momentums we have that are the initial momentum. Now remember, the mass of the volleyball is much greater than the mass of the tennis ball, so this is big, this is relatively small as a momentum. So before and then after, we have the mass of the volleyball, the velocity of the volleyball, plus the mass of the tennis ball, velocity of the tennis ball. So these two sides of the equation have to equal each other. All right, so we're talking about conservation of momentum. And momentum is given by small p is equal to the mass times the velocity of the object. And what we have is we have a small tennis ball, little m, and its velocity. So it has a momentum downward in the beginning, and we have the larger volleyball, which has a big mass and the same velocity, because they're both falling the same height, they're going to have the same velocity. This is going to have a larger momentum down because its mass is bigger. So mass times velocity here compared to mass times velocity here, even though they travel at the same speed, the volleyball has a greater velocity down. And this is as they're falling. But what's interesting is once they hit the ground, what happens? And so now, the volleyball's hit the ground, and it's coming back up. The tennis ball's still falling, they're moving towards each other. So you have a small momentum down. This is little mass of the volleyball, I'm sorry, little mass of the tennis ball times its velocity. And you've got the volleyball, it's struck the ground, and it's now changed direction. So you have this big mass times a little velocity up. So the overall, this is much bigger, and the velocity. The overall momentum now is up between the two objects. So after they collide, what happens is the little tennis ball leaves with a huge velocity for its little mass. And the volleyball, it's still going up, but its velocity was slowed greatly by the collision with the tennis ball, and it still has its big mass. So it has momentum up, but the transfer momentum to the, the little tennis ball causes it to shoot up with extra large speed. So you have a conversion momentum from the volleyball to the tennis ball, but because the tennis ball's mass is proportionately smaller, its velocity has to leave proportionately greater, and hence you see it shoot up in the air very high. Now this is even better if you do it with a basketball and a tennis ball. The basketball is about nine times the mass of a tennis ball, so you get about nine times the velocity taking off. And because of that, it doesn't work very well in the classroom because it hits the ceiling. So that's why I use a volleyball, because you can actually still see it. But if you get into a big gym or do it outside, use it basketball or try it at home with a basketball and you'll see the results are even more dramatic. 
Thanks for checking it out. Same idea, only now we're going to reverse it. Put the big ball in the little ball, and yeah, fold you. Why is this one not bouncing as high as when we do this way? Need good reactions when you do this demo. So think about what we just learned about conservation momentum and why this ball doesn't bounce as high. Hopefully you realize the little bit of momentum that this one can transfer this while this one's coming down with a larger momentum, it just barely cancels this momentum out. So it's change in mass, a more massive ball here, less massive ball here. This momentum is going to dominate this momentum basically, not allowing this to bounce up very high.